Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Pitch at Home. I'm going to introduce our four special guests in a second, Adelaide United fans. Are. First of all, massive shout out to RAA once again. Thank you very much for supporting the club. Flint is university. You can see that behind me. I'm wearing the FFA Cup top as well. Thank you very much to Comwire IT, uh, proud supporters of Adelaide United. And we are so thankful for you guys sticking with us during this really tough time. I've got a very special intro. So boys, what I want you to do is look up and down, left and right, because my intro goes like this. Here's the story of a thing called COVID. It took Adelaide and the rest of the world by storm. Everybody had to stay at home with their mothers and look at heaps of portable speakers. Here's the story of my club United. <laughs> Wanted still to make the best of this sitch. So they had a chat to me, Jay Walsh, help us. We're gonna bring back the pitch till the one day when I spoke to all of you guys, Brucey, Tarek, Elrich, Cello, Yucca, Paul. We are all together right now. We're Zooming brothers. And to you, I say hello. United, hello. United, hello. And to you, I say United, hello. Marcelo Karuska, Jakopo, La Roca, Tarek Elrich. Welcome. Thanks, man. <laughs> oh, sorry. Now, we've got to get this official to start off with, right, because we need to give all the official thank yous. Thank you very much to Perth Glory for letting Tarek do this. Melbourne City for, um, obviously, Flacco being involved. Thank you to the Marcelo Karuska Football Academy and Enzo's for allowing Chelo to be on this and Adelaide United and the Government of South Australia for allowing Bruce Chitay to be involved. Boys, how are you? First of all, where are you? Start off with you, Brucey. Where are you in the world right now? At home in Adelaide. Um... Wouldn't be, wouldn't prefer to be anywhere else at the moment. So, South Australians, a very patriotic state, and they're showing that by, you know, showing their determination to stay at home, keep the numbers down, and and we're doing that. No time to be complacent, but you know we're far better off than other places around the country and certainly around the world. Cello, you're in Adelaide at the moment as well. Um, I'll, I'll get to you and uh, Jacopo in a second. Taza, what's going on with you, mate? Because you look, you obviously lifted up your shirt earlier. So are you just hanging out with the fam in Sydney at the moment and growing a beard? And obviously you've changed apparel sponsors. You've gone from Nike to Adidas. So what's happening there? Very disappointing. Yeah, no, I, uh, shut up, Bruce, from the talk. <laughs> oh, right. No, back home, back in Sydney, uh, obviously... Uh, with tough uh, with this whole coronavirus thing happening, um, I jumped on the the last flight out um, on the day we found out that uh, we stood down, and yeah, back home, um, trying to build my family home um, and being busy. So yeah, although it's not uh, the greatest of times, uh, I'm making the most of uh, my time at home. Uh, I'll ask you about your situation in a second, Taz, but uh, Cello and Jacopo, obviously, you have family back in Argentina and in Italy, where especially over in, in Europe, we know what, what's happening in the, um, I guess, the seriousness of COVID-19. So how full on is it for your family at the moment, Jacopo? Yeah, especially everyone know in Italy, the situation is very bad, but it uh, seems like uh, now... They are on the good track and uh, hopefully the numbers they are going down because uh, it was tough. But we were lucky that um, my family didn't, it, they were not involved uh, in all of this. You know, they uh, keep the rules, so they listen what the government said. Then uh, hopefully the situation is going to be good very soon. Cello, what about you, mate? You've got your... Is your brother still living with you at the moment and not paying any rent? No, no, no. Actually, he moved two weeks ago. So, yeah. So, I have a, I have a room, a spare room. So, yeah. <laughs> now, if someone is interested, let me know. <laughs> but how, how is it affecting you? Obviously, you've got, you got two boys in, in school. So, in South Australia, it's, um, it's kind of a, a different phase of what's going on to what, what's happening overseas in other parts of the world. So everybody's affected. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Uh, if I talk about my family in Argentina, uh, we are very lucky. They are all healthy. They are working. 
the, we have a chicken farm over there, so they are allowed to sell the eggs, which is, is important for them. It's a family business and they, they are working well and the main thing, they are healthy. But as you know, and happen also in, in Europe, especially in Italy, also in Spain, it's, it's pretty similar to what happened in Argentina. But uh, I think the government did very well. They took a lot of uh, restriction and the, the, the people is listening now and it, it's getting better. It's getting better week and week. So hopefully we start to come, we come back to normal soon. Okay, two more serious questions. The first one over to you, Tarek Elrich. The, the idea of being stood down, being a professional athlete, um, I, I wanted you, if you can, just to explain the reality of that because you're all on, on wages like everybody else in the world is affected by this. But obviously, when, when you sign a contract, you forecast to earn a particular amount of money, no matter how much it is. And when that's either reduced or you need to be stood down from work, it obviously affects what's going on. You've got your mansion being built behind you in, um, in Western Sydney at the moment. So is it, is it a pretty unique time that you obviously never expected to go through in your career, no matter what it was? Uh, look, you know, uh, it's been a tough time for, for everyone. Um, obviously, a lot of people around the world have lost their jobs, um, been stood down from their jobs. Um, you know, private businesses have been uh, shut down or, or gone into bankruptcy um, in this period. So, you know, you kind of feel for everyone. Um, you know, this situation, I think, is a first for many. Um, yeah, so being, when we found out about being stood down, we didn't quite understand how it will actually work. Um, but yeah, when we were told that it was with no pay, um, like someone for me, I've been in Perth for two months. Um, I rented a house there. I bought furniture, uh, so I've relocated my whole life over there. And then two months later, I'm I'm back in Sydney. I've still got my house there, um, paying my rent still. Um, you know, I, I understand that the person that owns the house has uh, mortgage repayments to make, so. I'm still paying my rent. I'm, as we touched on before, I'm here in Sydney building my house. So I kind of had a bit of money uh, put aside to, to kind of get through. Um, I was thinking more retirement um, once I retired to give myself a bit of time to, for that transition period. Um, so I've kind of dipped into that savings a little bit. Um, but yeah, look, there's, I'm sure there's players, there's people out there that are, are doing it tough because you know there is people out there that live month to month. So it's definitely a tough time. Um, hopefully, uh, this can uh, all fade away real quick and we can get on to living our lives again. And just finally, Brucey, as one of the big dogs at Adelaide United, off the field now, I'm sure going into the role, you never, ever <laughs> dreamt or had a nightmare of having to deal with this within your first six to 12 months because it's something that, that you're the person that has to deliver the news to people what, what's going on with the current situation. And you were a player you know, a couple of years ago, for, so for yourself, it's been a, a baptism of fire, so to speak. Yeah, certainly. I mean, there's there's very few positives uh, at the moment. Um, selfishly, if I look at it, it's a fantastic uh, learning experience um, and just an experience in general. You know, this to navigate what's what's going on, this one in a hundred year type event. Um, I think in the long run, I'll look back and, and be happy that, you know, in a sense that I went through it. You know, if you go through everything smooth sailing, then there's a lot of lessons that, that you don't learn. Um, in saying that, it's been very difficult. There's a lot of anxiety. You know, there's anxiety with the administration staff. There's anxiety with the with playing staff, especially. Um, you know, footballers don't necessarily have transitional skills you know if you're the finance manager of a football club and you don't have to live in sportland you can you can go work in an accounting firm or, or get another job easily enough when everyone starts rehiring again um as a footballer you know it's, it's not like you can go and and play another sport all those sports are suffering the same like us and and it's not like you can just you know go and do something completely different hence the anxiety levels so it's been difficult, you know, I've, I've called all the boys last week, you know, I've called all the youth players, I'm, I'm trying to keep in touch with them as often as possible. As soon as I'm getting some uh, important information, I'm trying to pass that on as, as soon as possible as well. Um, but that's all you can do now. There's, 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 n there's nothing certain, um, so it's hard to give anyone any sort of, um, 
any sort of comfort or, um, you know, any sort of, you know, forecast as to what the future is going to look like because no one, no one knows. Uh, that is the serious stuff out of the way. I appreciate all of your, your honesties. Now, both of us have uh, two hands at the moment, which is great. You've got 10 fingers. What I want you to do is give a score out of 10 on what you think of Jacopo's haircut at the moment. So out of 10, please, I want to see a raise of hands. Taz, I know you're holding your phone at the moment. So Bruce has gone nine. No, yeah. Got your haircut similar to mine. mine. <laughs> and I've, I've got no hair. So what happened? Dalek, Dalek is like... This? <laughs> What's going on, LaRocca? It, it looks like you've done it yourself, mate. Is isolation getting to you that bad? Yeah. No. What's my bad? Then uh, my wife tried to help me, but uh, it was, she was uh, good, good. And then I decided, okay, I shave. But I really miss the time when uh, I used to have the echo from the... Number one barber shop in a little bit. <laughs> uh, look, I wanted to talk about that because uh, it's great to have you. Uh, um, when you play football around the world, it's a it's a unique time. It's not like every year you can catch up for a, year, a reunion to talk about, you know, when we, we did win the uh, the championship because you all move on to either different clubs or different parts of the world. And uh, I'm going to be speaking to um, the Spanish boys really soon. I remember like Pablo Sanchez, a couple of days after winning the championship, he, he knew that he wasn't going to be spending time at Adelaide again. So for you boys, do you, do you have that opportunity to, to catch up? You've got WhatsApp groups and stuff to, to stay in touch because football no. is always going to hold you guys close together, um, especially throughout such a, an amazing campaign of that 2015-16 that time. West Side die. West Side is dying. We used to have a WhatsApp group called West Side because we all lived on the West in Adelaide. And West Side died. <laughs> we don't use it. <laughs> So that's going to, so Taz has transferred from West Side to Western Sydney to Western Australia. So he's still got a little bit of, of West in him. Chelo, I'm West, a I'm West to die, bro. I'm dying in the West. Damn, no, they no. left me straight away, bro. No, 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 no. It's not well, true. Dada, I'm like I was in West Italy. No, no, me too. Uh, me too. Uh, every, uh, when I moved to Melbourne, uh, I found that uh, I was looking for uh, an house in the uh, Western Melbourne. You know, they say to me, you know, go, go, in the town, go in the city. No, I say, no way. I'm going to be in the <laughs> West. West of the West, bro. But the West Chilo, what about right? you, mate? Come You're on. still in the West, Marcello. And yeah, what, what I wanted to ask is it seems that everybody kind of finds their way back to Adelaide in a way. You know, you spent a, a little bit of time away. Is that your phone making that noise, Tarek? I mean, you've got a mansion in Western Sydney. Oh, mute. Put your phone on mute, Tarek, just for a little bit. Just for a little bit. Phone. Yours, I think. All right. Okay. Okay. You know, grandpa's put his phone on mute, which is brilliant. No, you, we can't hear you if your thing's on mute. Um, everybody finds their way back to Adelaide. So at Adelaide United, we speak of yourself, Cello, who has an involvement with, um, obviously, your academy. Eugene Galakovic is back. Bruce is back in a way as well. You spent a little bit of time in the football wilderness playing for the Wanderers in Melbourne City. Um, but it seems that Adelaide is a city everybody loves coming back to. Yes, yes. Adelaide is, is, is my city, it's my home now. That's why we decided to stay, keep living in, in, in Australia because uh, Adelaide is a great city and all these boys know about it. And always been telling them why you're going to Sydney, guys, go to Melbourne, come here. We, we have a beautiful life here. We have five minutes, we have the beach, we have the rest, best restaurant cafe here in, in Adelaide. At the, I don't know, driving 10 minutes. I was living in Sydney, I was living in Melbourne. I know what means, which every, everything is, is very busy, you know, everything is very far. I said to them, come here, guys, come here. And only Bruce listened to me, so hopefully Flacco and Tari can change their mind now. Flacco, what are you doing at Melbourne City currently, mate? A, a little bit of coaching, is this something you've always wanted to do? Yeah, no, it's, it's just... Uh, a new role, a new part of my life. Uh, yeah, it was, was something that I was thinking, but um, I had to see. I had to see how, how I go. But uh, until now, I'm very, I'm very happy because I have a good team. I coach the under-14 of uh, Melbourne City. And uh, I see, I had to wait because I still am uh, not sure what I want to do. But 
until now I'm happy about my players, but uh, I want to ch challenge uh, myself uh, with the. Uh, I cannot tell you, but uh, okay. I would do it in one two years. <laughs> I mean, we're not about keeping secrets because we may never do this chat again. So we'll just um, watch this space no, no, in again. Two years, in two years, we do again. Okay. Every, every year, we do again. All right, Please. we'll do this. Yeah, this is, this is our basically our reunion. Uh, Tarek, uh, just on your, your current situation with Perth, what's that like doing a, um, a mid-season transfer? You know, obviously in world football, it's, it's known the A-League's getting more familiar with it, but for you to change clubs, is that a, a good time for, for you to look at more opportunity and have a bit more, I guess, security in terms of what happens to the back end of your career? We know that from Adelaide United, Vinny Leah went over to Perth as well. So um, a good move for you? Oh, look, it was a first for me. Um, I've never been moving uh, much in my career. So, uh, yeah, look, the opportunity came. Um, you know, we are talking about prolonging my career. Um, uh, I was a red player and at Western Sydney, I didn't really have much of an option um, past this season. So, I thought to myself, uh, it's a nice place um, I like to live. Uh, very similar to Adelaide. Um, we live by the beach uh, down there. So really enjoying it. Uh, well, I was enjoying it. Um, now I'm back home. So I'd like to, to finally get back there um, once the season or training starts again and and really get to explore. I didn't really get a chance to, to venture out uh, too much while I was there in that show. All right, boys. Um, Tarek's obviously leaving the internet to be the last thing he installs in his new house. Um, let's quickly go around the group here and focus on when you were all playing together at Adelaide United, who was the best leader in the change rooms? Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the person with the captain, as you would have seen with John McCain. He not necessarily was called the captain, but he in the change room and the locker room was. Who was the, uh, the person that was uh, the, the best with the lads? <laughs> okay now everybody's pointing down and i'm i'm quite interested to see what happens now because i have a feeling everyone's going to point up when i say who would be the person struggling the most in isolation not being I'll able to leave the house visitors. stay away from my visitors i'm saying bye to my visitors <laughs> <laughs> what's going on <laughs> what's happening eric's busy <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Sorry, <man. laughs> Told you, four thirty is not a good time, man. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll wrap this up in a second. Which one of which one of you four boys would be struggling the most in isolation with the fact that you can't leave the house? Who do you think it would be? Me, I'm good in my house. I'm <laughs> What do you think, Flacco? I think Tarek, 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 Tarek for sure. Tarek. He always wants to go and do something, this kid. I'm doing, building my house. Okay, and finally, um, uh, Brucey, for some reason, I'll always, and I always tell you this, I always remember the game that Adelaide United played against Melbourne City to put us in the, um, the A-League Grand Final, and you had the, um, the press conference or on-ground interview at the end of the game. You're at the end of the game. Pretty sure that... Um, that some of the Melbourne City boys came out and spoke that week and you, you came out and said, we are a family. And speaking to um, players like Cameron Watson and Jake Barkadesh and Johnny McCain, they said around that period of the, the couple of years that you all played together was the best when it came to you boys playing as a football club, but you, got, you boys as a brotherhood as well. Would you, would you agree that th that time is always going to stick in your mind in your football journey and also, I guess, your life is the best time that you've played football? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's very rare you get that dynamic. So um, for me, and I think for, for everyone on this call, I think it was I think it was fantastic. You know, the the camaraderie, the fam. Like, look at it now. Everyone still talks to each other. We're still in contact constantly. You know, I, I wouldn't go a couple of months without without speaking to the boys. So um, family sticks together. We did that. Um, and even after, you know, I went overseas, other players went overseas, other players left the club um, through that two, three years period when the Spaniards were there. Um, it was really a, a very special period, definitely.
And what about for, for, for you boys, Cello and Flacco and Tazza, would you agree with what Brucey just said? Yeah, 100%. For me, we had a great bunch of boys, um, both on and off the pitch. We had each other's backs. We had some great drives, us four. Um, we used to drive in Flacco's car. He didn't use the air condition, which is great in Elizabeth in the summer. But we had some great times. Honestly, memories I'll, I'll never forget. Um, probably the most enjoyment I've had in my career, for sure. Remember the, remember the drive home when I got that uh, Korean offer? Do you remember? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, no, I'm not going to Korea. You know, they reckon uh, <laughs> there's this club in Korea. <laughs> Boys are like, you can't leave. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. Two days later, I was on a plane. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> That's how quickly it happens. Well, Cello, can you please finish this off and tell people how to get involved with your football academy when we're allowed to hang out in groups of more than 10, please? Because you said, make sure you pump up my academy. Because you're driving, if anyone who hasn't seen this now, Cello's got this massive van now with branding all outside of it. The Marcelo football, uh, Karuska football. Wow. How do we get involved? Really? Yeah, he's got a so big So much family. money. Yeah, yeah man. Too so much Yonder. money, man. Oh, I'll <laughs> see a picture after, no worries. You uh, can't even have a, uh, you need a haircut, Chelo. Yeah, I know. I know. I awesome. miss you. You remember when you, you, I have a haircut from you when we went to Malaysia, I think. <laughs> you remember that one? Your, your clip, I was broke. <laughs> <laughs> one of the worst haircuts I, I have, but now. He had too. a clip, uh, <laughs> the bikes were all broken. Like so, this. like, it was half. <laughs> <laughs> all right boys thank you very much for your time stay safe thank you. no this is it man we, 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 we what? Can, well we've got to go i've never spoken yet man my guest by my guest left and everything i'm here by myself okay well we will put your mobile number on the description of this taz if anybody <laughs> wants to chat to you for I'm anyone right. who doesn't have it yet i'm so busy i've got things to do Okay, guys, thank you very much. Take care. And um, I, I like to finish these off by, of course, saying you're always going to have that bond of Adelaide United. Uh, we, we are very grateful for, for what you did as, um, as players for not just the city, but the, the football club. Um, so thank you very much for all of your contributions. Stay safe and we'll chat to you really soon. Thank you. Thanks, boys. How do we get off, man? <laughs>